Hello all. In today's session, we are going to see a very important concept which is psychological statistics based concept called regression to mean. Regression to mean is a very powerful concept which, uh, which got derived as uh, mean reversion in the process of investing in the financial world. And it's also applicable to many other events in financial markets, so not only in investing in equities, but it's also into real estate and many other real life scenarios. Regression to mean is an important concept to understand uh, to achieve success in many areas, whether it is investing in equities, investing in real estate, or even in our careers, because trust and uh, peaks are part of this life and cycles are part of life and uh, regression to mean is basically whenever there is an outcome which is of any event which is uh, which is drifted to the extremes whether it is positive or negative side it tends to revert to the mean this uh, pertaining to the similar concept we have learned in statistics in our school days uh, but this uh, analysis that I have set up is more to do words with the investing in equity side so as said uh, this powerful concept in psychological statistics was conceptualized by Francis Galton um, in the context of um, simple linear regression uh, basically, uh, Galton, I mean, uh, the, it, the states that, you know, if the outcome is extreme, the first time you measure anything, the next time it will be closer to the average when you measure it. Uh, it describes how a random outcome that is outside the average eventually tends to return to the mean value or regresses back to the mean value. So let's take an example here and a classic example that uh, I uh, pulled it out from Daniel Kahneman's Thinking Fast and Slow book is um, the golfers. So performance of golfers uh, is the example that we're going to see. So a group of golfers plays um, two days of the same tournament on two successive days and it has frequently been observed that uh, the worst performers on the first day will tend to improve their scores on the second day and the best performance on the first day will tend to do uh, worse than uh, worse on the second day. So this phenomenon occurs because golfers scores, scorers are, um, scores are determined in part by underlying ability and in part by chance. It's a combination of both ability and chance. For the first day, some golfers will be lucky and score more than their ability and some will be unlucky and score less than their ability. Some of the lucky golfers on the first day will be lucky again on the second day. So it need not be like you know the golfers who did score well on the first day has to score badly second day so it is influenced by a factor of luck also and uh, but more of them will have average or below scores on the second day similarly if a golfer who was lucky on the first day is more likely to have bad score on the second day than a better score similarly golfers who score less than the mean on the first day will tend to see their scores uh, better on the second day now uh, the next slide talks about uh, Daniel Kahneman's book which is uh, Thinking Fast and Slow. Uh, he is a great author uh, and uh, economist. Uh, he has won Nobel Prize in um, you know, economics uh, for his work uh, especially on behavioral economics and um, to illustrate uh, Kahneman's story in simple terms when humans make a severe mistake or uh, their performance will later usually return to average level this will seem as an improvement and as proof of a belief that it is better to criticize than to praise so people generally think uh, you know in the appraisal systems in uh, jobs or in careers the people think that you know when uh, the performance is done with appreciation they tend to improve further and uh, criticism can pull the employees down but that's not really the case usually there is no causal explanation and that's what Kahneman's point is that uh, we cannot attribute the performance and regression to mean uh, just uh, to any specific causal reasoning like criticism or praising so uh, here the change will be perceived uh, whenever there is a performance change that change is usually perceived as a uh, result uh, and uh, people tend to analyze a cause for that performance uh, change so uh, he concludes that just because criticizing or praising uh, precedes uh, the regression towards a mean the act of criticizing or of praising is falsely attributed uh, causality 
he explains that uh, statistical regression towards mean cannot be really attributed uh, to causal reasoning uh, as against human thought process we humans have a tendency to apply or to attribute causal reasoning for any outcomes and that is what he's refuting here and what Kahneman points out is that human beings are more prone to uh, thinking causal and trying to find causal reasoning for such random events which eventually regresses to mean over our distribution this is a fallacy according to Daniel Kahneman the next slide talks about statistical regression to mean so going back a bit uh, on history you know this harkens back to the Gauss distribution Gauss was again a statistical uh, he was a scientist a mathematician um, you know who used statistical regression uh, very uh, you know profusely and pr he provided algorithms to arrive at uh, estimates in probability theory uh, the normal distribution also called Gaussian distribution uh, as a dedication for his uh, discovery and uh, arriving at providing many algorithms it's called the normal distribution curve itself is called Gaussian distribution it's a very common continuous probability distribution so normal distributions are important in statistics we have all learnt in school and are often used to represent real valued random variables whose distributions are unknown so a random variable with a Gaussian distribution is said to be normally distributed and is called a normal deviate now Gaussian processes are useful in statistical modeling benefiting from properties inherited from the normal distribution in today's world especially in artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms Gaussian process probabilistic models are used um, you know thoroughly and it's it also aids in generic supervised learning method designed to solve regression and probabilistic classification problems so machine learning especially there is a lot of continuous regression and there are a lot of uh, distributions and probabilities probabilistic uh, classification that is done um, especially in supervised learning methods and making the bots learn um, and get adapted to the human activity so you know that that's where the machine learning application comes into the picture there are a lot of practical application of Gaussian process and associated algorithm in today's world I just just put this as a you know it just harkens back to you know from history standpoint where did it all start and we would have learned this uh, in statistics in college degrees and schools also and mean reversion is nothing but you know regression uh, regressing back to the mean is what we are focusing here and now we will see how this will impact the financial markets and stock uh, stock market performance so in the investing world uh, financial world uh, Jeremy Siegel uh, the great investor coined this term as mean reversion and if anything that is true in the markets it is mean reversion mean reversion plays again and again because of the cycles that uh, the financial markets follow if a business organization has a highly profitable uh, was highly profitable in past few years uh, despite the underlying reasons for its performance being unchanged it, these businesses are likely uh, to do less well in the next few years again mean revert in performance so it's not only in the stock performance even in the business performance in the profitability uh, curve also there is a mean reversion that happens this could be underpinned by the high base and low base effects as well why they mean reward right it's because of the base effect as well so when the performance uh, continuously profitability for example of a business increases for three four five years continuously uh, the base becomes very high and maintaining that kind of a continuous growth ahead becomes difficult and then there even from a demand side for example for that business the product demand could come down um, you know the economic cycles can revert many other things can cause this uh, performance degrade in the profitability and then there could be years of uh, underperformance or uh, a par for the course performance and then again the curve reverts and uh, the mean reversion starts taking place and as we all know stock market uh, performance um, you know just stock performance basically reflects the underlying earnings performance of the business 
and precisely that's why mean reversion happens for most of the business and it need not be like you know when the mean uh, mean reversion has to happen for businesses there are business that eventually dies down without mean reverting uh, and that could be uh, driven by uh, many other factors of uh, you know disruption etc and that's precisely why contrarian investing works because uh, there is a value for any business at a price and when the value uh, when why mean reversion happen is also driven by other than the base effect other than the economic cycles also the value catches up and um, the the value underlying value gets too much beaten up uh, and the price gets too much beaten down and so uh, the value finds its place to through the mean reversion process and this uh, very well applies for other uh, areas of investing too like real estate when the prices tends to go down discounting too much pessimism or optimism in the market they tend to revert to the average price based on the fundamentals and base effect stock prices reflect value most of the time in the markets but not all the time over pessimistic time gives good entry point for us as investors to buy stocks and extreme optimism drives stock prices fundamentally out of whack to the other extremes it's a very important concept to understand as an investor so that uh, it helps us to remain calm and unperturbed and remain invested through the up and ups and downs trends in the market and not to try the try to time the markets and uh, precisely that's why they say time in the markets uh, uh, performance uh, tends to be better than timing the market because it's really difficult to time these ups and downs and another strong reason uh, so to not buy uh, mutual funds based on just the past records and this is precisely why because mutual funds and mutual fund managers who are performing extremely well over the past might not guarantee the similar performance ahead and but you know people who are really good uh, fund manager really good tend to perform well if you take a larger duration longer duration and uh, that's why stock market performance also tends to be better when we take a longer term view so uh, it's important to do uh, thorough analysis of the funds and just not go blindfolded with the recent performance and enter those funds similarly we investors have a tendency to invest in stocks which have recently done well uh, and uh, switch and especially we tend to switch from the ones which are beaten down uh, with a fear and move towards the one that's performing well and that's exactly the opposite what we need to do as investors a uh, very important concept so that's mean reversion and i hope uh, this was uh, useful for us as investors thank you